heaven may be formed, but it won't prosper. When the darkness falls, it won't prevail. Because the God of self knows only how to triumph. My God will never fail. No, my sing with me. This is a very easy song. Just lift up your hands and then follow me, okay? This is how I find my battles. This is how I find my battles. Sing with me. This is how I find my battles.
IIS family. For those not at Northwest who maybe don't know us yet, my name is Phil Walker. And I am Jackie. And we are here at the Satya campus in Jakarta, the Satya Bible School, Estete Satya. And uh, we miss meeting with our family at IS Northwest. We hope you are doing well. We are doing well, us with our four children. And we just want to share with you a psalm of encouragement as we remember the promises of God even in this uncertain time. This is Psalm 91. Ready? Psalm 91. He who dwells in the shadow of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely he will save you from the foulest snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. You will not fear the terror of night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but, but it will not come near you. You, you will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. If you make the Most High your dwelling, even the Lord who is my refuge, then no harm will befall you. No disaster will come near your tent. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against your stone. You will tread upon the lion and the cobra. You will trample the great lion and the serpent. Because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. I will protect him, for he acknowledges my name. He will call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Psalm 91. Psalm 91. So again, IS family, keep safe. Enjoy your family at this time, and we can't wait to get back with our church family. Bye bye. bye. God bless. <laughs>
to get the link for the Zoom Dawn Prayer Fellowship. The WhatsApp number is 0812-9408-4973. For our tithes and offering, IES Northwest relies on the generosity of our God through His people. If you want to participate in this ministry of IES Northwest in reaching out to the people in need of the gospel, please transfer your tithes and offering to this bank account number that you can see on the screen. Now, let us pray for our tithes and offering and for the message. Lord God, thank you for this wonderful uh, day that you've given to us, Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, we lift up all our lives before you, Lord God, as we take the tithes and offering. I pray that you will bless all the people, Lord God. I pray that you will touch their hearts, Lord God. I pray, I pray that you will bless the works of their hands, Lord Jesus Christ. And whatever they give, Lord God, we will give it back ten times more, Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for blessing these people, Lord God. Thank you for giving them the opportunity to be able to join this service. And Lord, as we listen to your word, we pray that you will be with us. We pray that you will touch our hearts. We pray, we pray that you will be guiding us, Lord God, as we listen and as we learn. Give us your knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. A blessed day to everyone. I am so glad that amidst of our dire situation right now, this COVID-19 outbreak, we are still gathering together as a family of God and praising Him for what He has done for us. You see, in this situation, we are forced to stay at home and do the things that we should have done long time ago. What is that? First and foremost is our relationship to God. We usually prioritize our morning habits such as preparing for work or daily chores or for parents preparing their children to go to school that we miss to prioritize God and have communication with Him. This time, God is telling us that He stopped all activities already and He is asking us, Are you going to communicate with me now? Another thing is our relationship with our families. We have so many distractions in mind like gadgets, our phones, that we fail to have good time in our, with our parents and children. And instead of communicating with them, we face our phones to answer calls and messages. This time, we are locked up together with our family in our homes 24 7 so that we can spend time quality time with them have you seen people in the restaurants before this COVID-19 happened they are together and yet they are facing their phones they are talking to their phones and there is this personal hygiene we fail to wash hands before eating or it takes it's two days before we take a bath or change our clothes, especially during weekends and holidays when we just stay at home. Well, mostly for boys, yeah, like myself, I practiced that before. But now, personal hygiene is a must that we do not bother to pay high electric bills and water bills and buy cleaning supplies even though the price is now doubled. That includes face mask and honey sand sanitizers and also vitamins. So my prayer is that as we listen to the sharing for we have for today, we can absorb the message and digest it well so that we can use it to strengthen our mind, our body, and our soul especially as we face this present battle that we are having right now the circumstances that we have right now is one of the worst or if not 
the worst situation that we have ever faced in our lives in this generation. It's creating an overwhelming havoc all over the world. And it's not just affecting our physical health, but also our emotional health, our relationship to others, our careers, and even the spiritual aspects of our lives. We cannot greet each other anymore, shaking hands with each other, hugging each other. That is why so many people are now desperate, frustrated, and even afraid of having an enemy that we cannot even see. But we know that it is there because of the tragic events that happen to people all over the planet. And to make things complicated, we have active medias that spread the fear to everyone in an instant. We hear news of our friends getting infected in our virus. In this virus, our loved ones passed away because they cannot survive the torture that this virus is pouring onto them. And where do we see it? Facebook, WhatsApp. We also have accounts of infected people and their deaths from many countries all over the world. And the more we become updated to this news, the more cautious we and mindful we become concerning our health and the health of our family. We want to find a protection that can defend our family from getting infected. We look for ways that can make us safe and secure from the sting of this havoc. But the good news is that the lesson we are going to hear today is about the ultimate defense. It is the defense that can resist against all attacks and harm that comes in our way. A defense that can ensure safety of our loved ones that is the ultimate defense. Who among you wants to have that? Come along with me as I decipher, as we decipher the content of the Bible to search for this so-called ultimate defense. And as we go along, I hope that you will find out that there are three lines of defense that we can consider so that we can achieve the ultimate defense, a protection that can save us from the wrath of our enemies. Have you ever heard about the story of the walls of Jericho? What is the first thing that comes into your mind whenever you hear the story of the walls of Jericho? I am pretty sure that you can Picture the name Joshua and the Israelites in your mind as they defeated the people of Jericho, having a very fortified walls. But at this point, my focus is on the people of Jericho and their city and how they can lead us to the three lines of defense that we need to have so that we can battle against COVID-19. First of all, we have to understand that the situation they had before is similar to the situation that we have right now. Really? Yes. I invite you to open your Bibles in the book of Joshua 6, verse 1. Joshua 6, verse 1. And I will be reading from ESV version. And it says, now Jericho was shut up inside and outside because of the people of Israel. None went out and none came in. Here, we can see that Jericho is having a form of isolation or, if you may, quarantine because they are confident that they are protected from their so-called impenetrable walls. They consider their walls 
as their ultimate defense. Now, in order for us to understand why they feel secure inside their walls, let me give you some facts about it. First, the city comprises two great walls, the outer and the inner walls. The walls, if you combine them together, it compassed about nine acres of land. Now, to understand it clearly, one acre is approximately 16 tennis courts. Have you seen a tennis court? Have you seen how big it is? You combine 16 of them, you make it into a square, and you get one acre of it. That means the walls of Jericho is about 144 tennis courts packed together. Wow! They even say that two uh, F-150s can roam around it, can race in it. We can see how large these city walls are. No wonder Numbers 13 verse 28 mentioned that the cities that the people of Israel are about to conquer are fortified and very large. Now, let's look at the walls itself. The outer wall has a retaining wall. It's a support. It's about 12 to 15 feet high. And then on top of that retaining wall, is a mud brick wall that is about 20 to 26 feet high. Then there is this elevated ground level between the two walls to the inner walls and then the inner walls comprises the same height as the outer mud brick wall. So if you combine them together, it's about 50 feet high. Just imagine how enormous these walls of Jericho were. Whew. And this is the first line of defense that we need to be protected from the corona outbreak. We call it the outer defense. The walls. The outer part of our body. The World Health Organization gives us ways on how to protect ourselves against coronavirus. Some of them are washing our hands regularly, outer defense, wear masks and gloves when going out in public places, outer defense, avoid close contact with anyone, or we commonly known as, call it as social distancing outer defense. Take a bath and wash your clothes right away after going out somewhere. Outer defense. So many other protocols in order for us to be safe from this outbreak. This is what the health, the World Health Organization is offering us. So these people of Jericho thought that the first line of defense is enough for them to be protected. And some of us are also defending on that first line of defense. Only to find out, these people of Jericho, that their destruction is at hand. So what are the other two defenses that we need so that we can complete this ultimate defense? You will be surprised that the answer can be found also in the same story. I invite you to open your Bibles to Joshua 2. Now, to give you a short background, this is when Joshua sent two spies to investigate the military forces and equipments of their, this great city. There, they met a lady named Rahab, who happens to know the two lines of defense that we are looking for. Come and read with me the passage from verse 8 of Joshua 2. And I will be reading from NIV version. Before the spies lay down for the night, she went up on the roof. So this one is Rahab. She wants to talk to the two spies. 
and said to them, I know that the Lord has given you this land and that a great fear of you has fallen on us so that all who live in this country are melting in fear because of you. Melting in fear. So what is the second line of defense? It's called the mid-defense. And this is our courage inside. And this is not present in the people of Jericho. They were so afraid that the Bible records this country is melting in fear. Have you experienced being scared at night time? Maybe when you were still young? When it's time to go to bed, thinking that an extraordinary being will come and hunt you. You try to cover yourself with a blanket, wrap your body, and close your eyes until you can sleep. You cannot go to the toilet when needed. You cannot drink when you're thirsty because you're afraid. And when you hear a knock on the door, a sudden movement or a sound around your bedroom, the more you coil yourself like a crumpled paper, shivering. This is melting in fear. Fear must not sink in, in our minds and soul. Philippians 4 verse 6 says, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. Let us follow what the World Health Organization is telling us to do. But most of all, we should not invite fear in our homes, in our hearts. That when a visitor knocks at the door asking for help, you will invite them. You will not let them stay on the gates. As if when you invite them, you are also inviting coronavirus with them. That when somebody sneezes or coughs, you are already frightened. As if a barking dog running after you. Well, Rahab was courageous in telling the two foreign spies, the Israelites, their opponent, their enemy, about how she felt on that. She wants to be saved and to save others from destruction. She opened her father's house for her people who believed that they will be safe inside their house. She became a frontliner during her time. She invited people to be saved. She knew that destruction is in the face of her people. But she reacted appropriately to the situation. She doesn't want her people to die. May our response be the same as how Rahab did for such a time as this. Lastly, the third line of defense is called the inner defense. The inner defense. And you can find that in verse 11 of Joshua 2. It's also Rahab who says this one. When we heard of it, our hearts melted in fear and everyone's courage failed because of you. For the Lord your God is God in heaven above and on the earth below. I will repeat, for the Lord your God is God in heaven above and the earth below. The third line of defense is all we need to know. The Lord your God is God in heaven above and on earth below. It simply means that God is in control of everything. 
And Rahab knew that. I can imagine that after the spies instructed her to place a scarlet cord, which represents the blood of Christ, in the window of her father's house, she went around searching for her relatives, searching for others, inviting them to stay at her house to be safe from annihilation and also introducing them that the God of Israel will protect them from invasion of the enemies. Rahab is not only a frontliner, but also an evangelist. She proclaimed that the God of Israel is the God in heaven and on earth. Nothing is more powerful than Him. The Bible records in Ephesians 3, 20 and 21. Now to Him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to His power that is at work within us. To Him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to be a Rahab of our time, a frontliner and an evangelist. We might not be doctors or nurses or someone who are involved in medical situations. But we can proclaim the message of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Do you know someone who needs an encouragement and seeks the ultimate defense? Introduce them to the God of heaven and earth. We have online dawn prayer every day at 5 a.m. You invite them. We also have online services on Saturdays and Sundays. Invite them to come. Invite them so that they will know that we have a God that is always in control. So we can encourage them that amidst of this terrible situation, we only have three responses. First, to gather inside our outer defense like how Rahab gathered her people in her house of safety, singing praises and worshiping the true God. Our second response is to be the mid-defense, to be courageous. Do not let fear overcome you. Instead, I invite you to feed your faith and starve your fears. And most of all, amidst of this terrible situation, our first response is to depend on the ultimate defense that we can ever have. That is God Almighty. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, thank you very much, Lord, for helping us realize that we should depend on you that you are our ultimate defense and that our response will be like Rahab, to be an evangelist, to be a frontliners so that we can spread your gospel further. And Lord, help us to understand that we have to be the light, we have to be the salt of this world. Lord, may this uh, COVID-19 will not stop us from becoming a light. Lord, help us to remember the story of Rahab and the people of Jericho. Will you help us to remember how Rahab um, tried to save her people, her relatives in, um, in annihilation from the people of Israel. Lord, may we become a Rahab also that we can invite others so that they will get to know you more and more. Lord, we pray for the frontliners right now. Lord, we pray that you're going to be with them, that you're going to encourage them, that you're going to uh, take away the fears 
in their minds so that they can remember that their job is to minister for you, to encourage the people that are infected. Lord, we pray also for the infected people that you're going to heal them so that they will see how powerful you are. And most of all, Lord, we pray for ourselves that we can evangelize for you, that we can spread the gospel for you. So to the ones who are scared, to the ones who are afraid, to the ones that has fear, let us be the light for them. Lord, forgive us if there are times that we doubt you and there are times that we disobey you. And help us to forgive those who have sinned against us. In the loving name of our Lord, our Savior, and our friend, Jesus Christ, all God's people say, Amen and Amen.